Hello and welcome back. This time we're going to talk about a different type of, of continuous controller. We're talking about the I controller. Last time we talked about the B controller. This time it's the I controller. And the transfer function of this I controller. What was the transfer function of the P controller? It was basically the transfer function of a P element. And now the transfer function of an I controller is the transfer function of an I element. Yeah. Usually we don't call it TI, we call it TO. Yeah. Repeat time, this is called. What's the feature of an I controller? Let's think about, let's think about again in our diagram. There is a T. Yeah. There we again have our omega from t and our x from t. Our omega from t will go to a certain value. And our x from t will start here. What will our x from t do? Nothing. First time nothing. Because our y from t, how will our... How will our y from t look like? This will also be zero and then it will gently grow. Okay. This would be the step response. However, this is doing nothing. Okay. And then if this has reached, it's crawling away. Okay. It's crawling away. Now this is getting smaller. And the rays, the steepness is getting not that high anymore because this is simply getting smaller. Yeah. So this will in the end, in the end, we will look like this. The steepness, the closer this gets, the steepness is getting lower and lower. Yeah. So y from t is reaching a certain level look like a pt1 element and our x from t this will start to grow faster and then it will slow down usually and here where there's no difference this will be constant anymore this will be constant this could be that it looks that way. So this looks a little bit like a PT1 element. This looks a little bit like a PT2 element. Also, also might be the case that this is swinging here. Yeah. Also looks like a PT2 element with damping different. Yeah. This is how a typical answer of an I part of an I element is looks like of an I controller. Yeah. Some change of of reference variable, it will look like this. Yeah. And y from t will do at the beginning nothing, change, and the change rate of y from t will slow down simply. Yeah. Because this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the sum of this actually will grow small, will grow not that, that fast. Yeah. What we actually sum up is this area here. This area we are summarizing and this is building this y from t. At the beginning it's a there's also always big parts coming too so it's growing very fast and then only smaller parts and smaller parts and smaller parts and smaller parts per second are, are re added and this is why this is getting slower. And this x from s will look like this, depending on the, on the system, of course, but this is how it looks like. This means an eye controller does not have any, any difference left. Difference is gone. Difference is gone. Okay? That's the upside of an eye controller. The downside if we something suddenly happens, 
like in this example, there is a step yeah? in the beginning. Pfft, it's not changing anything. It's acting like it does, just don't care. This is the downside. Remember the P-Controller? This was the big advantage of the P-Controller, to react. Yeah? But then it just lost interest, you can say. Yeah? Uh, then okay, I'm good enough. The I-Controller do it exactly the other way around. At the beginning, let's see if this is uh, going away again. And in the end, it will smooth out or get this very accurate. P controller and now I controller. Next time we are talking about a different type, the D controller. See well how this behaves. If this is really a good controller strategy or just some idea for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.